Welcome back, High Level listeners, to week five, day four of our English for Travel speaking course. Today's focus is showing you many more ways that you can use your brand new travel experience questions and phrases with your own experiences and making your own sentences. Hi, everyone. We're High Level Listening, and we're here to help you take your travel English to the next level with real American English and British English. I'm Kat, and I'm from the States. And I'm Mark I'm from the UK. So we're here with Side by Side American and British English to help you improve your listening, pronunciation and fluency skills in our English for Travel speaking course. For all of July, we've been releasing a new video each day, Monday to Friday on YouTube for free. But for those who don't want to wait for tomorrow's video or you just want all of our course in one super easy, super organized place, you can get the full and complete English for Travel course today by purchasing it in our High Level Listening store. Yes, yeah, so on top of getting access to 25 videos and five completed units, you'll get over 80 example sentences, which is double the amount that you'll get in this video. So you can check that out in the description below. So today is week five, day four, and it's time to expand your skills a little more and show you what's possible with all the new phrases you've learned this week. We'll be using the vocabulary and giving you lots of extra example sentences so you can start to understand the key building blocks of each structure and think of new ways to add your own ideas and your own experiences. Mark and I will give you an example each. And again, you can find even more, double in fact, even more examples in our full English for travel course in our store. Okay, let's get started with one of our example sentences. The first phrase was two parts. How was your trip? Did you have a good time? You can change certain parts like, how was your weekend getaway? Did you enjoy it? We use this phrase a lot. How was your day? How was your weekend? How was your business trip? Did everything go well? Our next phrase is to pick someone up. So to pick Mark up. I picked Mark up. We can usually change something in the middle and that'll make it easy to use. I'll pick you up at 7 p.m. for the concert, okay? Usually the person goes between pick and up, like I need to pick my sister up from the train station later. Next phrase, eating and drinking my way through Italy. You can change the activities and of course you can change the country. For example, we spent our vacation exploring and hiking our way through the mountains of Switzerland. We enjoyed shopping and sightseeing our way through the streets of Tokyo. Our next phrase, that's what I would have done. That's what... I would have done, okay? So if I were you, that's exactly what I would have done. Say other things like, great choice. That's exactly what I would have done. Next phrase, a bit of an adventure. This is quite a fixed phrase. There aren't many variations of this. So all of our examples will have adventure. Our hike turned into a bit of an adventure when we lost the trail. Now remember, it's not actually a fun adventure. It might have been something bad or difficult or not too easy. So getting to such a tiny village was a bit of an adventure. The next one, if you regret something and you think, oh, I wish I had chosen something else. I really should have booked some tickets in advance. I really should have done this. Ugh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I really should have booked some concert tickets in advance. It's I should have, and then it's the third form of the verb. For example, I should have made reservations earlier. Now we can't get a table. Next phrase, packed with people. Packed means very, very crowded. There's a lot of people. For example, the shopping mall was packed with people during the holiday sales. The beach was packed with tourists over the weekend. So packed with tourists, packed with people, packed with visitors. The next phrase has a British and American difference. In the UK, queuing up. 
queuing up means waiting in a queue or a line of people. So we spent hours queuing up for the new ride at the amusement park. Or in American English, we could say waited in line or stood in line to wait in line to stand in line. We waited in line for the famous bakery's pastries. Our next phrase, were you still able to do something? Did you still have the opportunity to do it? Were you still able to do everything you wanted to do? Despite the rain, were you still able to go everywhere you wanted to go? Were you still able to is another way of saying, could you? Uh, even with the delays, could you see all the major sites? Or even with the delays, were you still able to see all the major sites? The next one's another British and American difference. In England, the touristy bits. The touristy bits are the most popular tourist destinations or places. The popular bits, the nice bits, the fancy bits, the touristy bits. We visited all the touristy bits, like the Tower of London and Buckingham Palace. Explored the touristy spots like the Statue of Liberty and Times Square. It was absolutely worth it. Now, some of this is nice because you can share a difficult experience or a tough experience and all the work you put in. The long hike was tough, but the view from the top was absolutely worth it. Absolutely is an adverb and you can change it. It was totally worth it. It was definitely worth it worth it. Waiting in line for hours was exhausting, but the concert was totally worth it. Next phrase, glad you got to see all that. In other words, I'm glad you got the chance to see those things, or I'm glad you got the opportunity to do those things. You can change the verbs. I'm glad you got to do that, see that, try that etc. I'm glad you got to see all that. It sounds like an amazing trip. I'm glad you got to experience all of those places. Now, if something is on your bucket list, visiting the Great Wall of China is on my bucket list. Think of really big, exciting adventures that you want on this list. The preposition with list is on, so it's on my list, on my to-do list, so it's on my bucket list. Skydiving has always been on my bucket list. If you want to continue the conversation, you told me you were going to... And then that encourages the other person to start talking about the next part of their trip. So maybe you told me you were going to visit the Grand Canyon. Did you go? Similar to you told me... You mentioned you were going to take a cooking class in Italy. Did you enjoy it? Our next phrase, it was like night and day. Remember, this is going to be something completely different. So the difference between the two cities was like night and day. They were completely different. Her attitude before and after the vacation was like night and day. So maybe before she was a little bit grumpy and afterwards she was relaxed and happy again. Night and day, total opposites. The next phrase, if you are alone in a place, but in a good way, I had the place all to myself. You can change the place between the phrases, I had the hotel, I had the beach, I had the restaurant, I had the, the whole town, I had the beach all to myself early in the morning. In the off season, I had the museum all to myself. A nice positive phrase. Our next phrase, I wish I had spent more time there. I wish I had done something. The museum was so interesting. I wish I had spent more time there. Yes, again, like I should have, and then the third form of the verb, I wish I had, and then the third form of the verb. So I wish I had done. I wish I had gone. I wish I had eaten. It's that third form. So it was so nice. I wish I had visited earlier. 
Now, think, the next one. Do you want to do the next one? Yeah. Now, the next one is very American, a beach vacay, because uh, Americans say vacation and then just as a cute way to say it, a beach vacay. Uh, I'm dreaming of a beach vacay in the Caribbean. There are variations, a beach vacay or beach holiday, a little holiday, a little vacay, a relaxing holiday, a relaxing vacay, a quick vacay, maybe, or a quick holiday. We're planning a little holiday for our anniversary. Next phrase is quite fixed. We don't change many words. Out in the middle of nowhere. So really far away, very remote or isolated. You're far away from any big cities. The cabin was out in the middle of nowhere. Perfect for a getaway. It can be positive or it could be negative. It just depends on the situation. So in a positive way, they found a hidden gem of a restaurant out in the middle of nowhere. So it's kind of surprising to find a really nice restaurant out in the middle of nowhere. I've heard it's really good down there. I've heard it's delicious. I've heard it's fun. I've heard it's really good down there. I've heard it's really beautiful in the south of France. Like Kat said, you can change the adjectives to many things. Another example, I've heard it's totally safe over there in Korea. Next phrase, we tried all sorts of local dishes. So on your vacation or your holiday, you like to try lots of different things. All sorts of different things is many different things. And those things could be local dishes, fruits and snacks, uh, tours, experiences, different things. We tried all sorts of local dishes when we visited Spain. You can try all sorts of things. You can see all kinds of things, all sorts of things, all kinds of things. We saw all kinds of different fruits and snacks in Thailand. The next phrase we can use with an adjective, sounds delicious, sounds fun, sounds great. Or if you want to put in a sentence, just add the word like. Sounds like you had the perfect trip. Wow, real Italian food sounds delicious. Sounds like you had a really good tour guide. Next, if you have any problems, you can say hiccups. There were a few hiccups. A few meaning two or three because we want to make problems small and hiccups are little problems. There were a few hiccups during the flight, but we made it. Road trip had a few hiccups, like a flat tire. So you can say like this problem, like that problem. Our flight got delayed. Our flight got delayed. Unfortunately, our flight got delayed by a few hours. That means we didn't leave on time. We were late. You might hear some different words in this phrase, like our flight got cancelled. So it's not leaving at all. Our flight got postponed. So pushed back to a later time. Our flight got cancelled due to bad weather. Another travel problem. We almost missed our connection. Almost missed a time or almost missed a transport link. So if you almost missed it, you still made it, but it was very, very close. Five minutes later would be too late. So we almost missed our connection because of the delay. It's funny because we didn't miss our connection, but we use the word almost to be, we were so close. It was so close. So we ran through the airport and we almost missed our flight. Okay, so we almost missed our flight, but we did catch it. We did catch our flight. Don't worry about us. Yeah. A bit of a headache, a bit of a mix-up, a bit of a mix-up. Uh, there was a bit of a mix-up with our hotel booking. This could mean a little problem. Maybe they didn't understand me, I didn't understand them, they couldn't find it. There was a bit of a mix-up with our hotel booking. Finding a parking spot was a bit of a headache. So an inconvenience, especially. 
it was difficult or it took a bit of extra time. In a busy city, finding a parking spot was a bit of a headache. It showed up in the end. This means uh, in the end, at the end of the story, finally, overall, this is what happened. The main point is that it finally ended. Uh, it showed up in the end. I was talking about my luggage here. We lost our luggage, but it showed up in the end. We got our luggage back finally. So when you want to say what happened finally, if you solved a problem or the problems, uh, you found a way around these obstacles, in the end. It showed up in the end. Did you get around to doing... My reservation showed up on the computer in the end. This sounds like it didn't show up, it didn't show up, it didn't show up, what's wrong? Ah, in the end, it showed up. Ah, huh, thankfully. Did you get around to doing any shopping while you were there? Did you get around to doing something means I know you had lots of fun tra travel plans and you wanted to do all of those first. So did you have any spare time? Did you have a little free time to do this? Did you get around to doing any shopping while you were there? Did you get around to doing any tours while you were in Paris? So say, did you get around to doing any sightseeing in New York? As Kat said, did you have time to do sightseeing in New York? Next, if you buy a souvenir or a gift for someone, you can say a small token to say thanks. A small token to do something. A small token to say, to remember, to show you my appreciation. So I brought you this as a small token to say thanks. She gave him a little gift as a small token to say thank you. Coming to get me and dropping me off. So thanks for coming to get me from the train station. I appreciate you dropping me off at the airport. So you can change the location of the place from the train station. The prepositions change. Coming to get me from the train station, dropping me off at the airport. Last phrase. Glad you got home safe. Glad you is the main phrase. And you can change the pieces afterwards. Glad you did this. Glad you tried that. It's in the past tense because you got home safe before. So glad you got home safe. Glad you made it home safe. Glad you got home safe after such a long trip. Glad you had a nice time. Sometimes we can just drop off. I'm glad. Glad you had a nice time. All right, great job, everyone. Just like all of our other units, we've got double the amount of example sentences in the full course. So that's 80 example sentences per unit. So that's over 400. Did I do the math right? 400 example sentences in our full course. You can get all the videos up front, MP3 downloads, so you can take them on the road with you, worksheets, all the phrases and dialogues ready for you to practice and take your English to the next level. Check out the link below in our description to get it today. Hey, thanks everyone. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. Why not try out some of these phrases and practice with us? You can put your own experiences with these phrases, like we said, and we do read and reply to all the comments. So try it out. We'll see it, check it and get back to you. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow for our very final class. Bye-bye.